Hi guys, Brando Kush again, and today I'm going to tell you guys how I started my worm composting. So, starting out, I went to gemsworms.com and got some red wigglers. I got European night crawlers, maybe some other species, but I started with red wigglers. And all I did is get a tote, drilled holes in the side, holes in the top. You know, throw some bedding in there. So starting out for a bedding, I would use my sunshine mix. Lay that down, get it nice and moist. And then I'd get any kind of cardboard paper, anything I had laying around, whether it's, you know, your paper bags from the store, if you got cardboard laying around. Stay away from your shiny magazine papers. But anything, newspaper, all that's fine. You know, it works. Anything you got, rip it up, nice fine pieces, different sizes, whatever. Throw it in your tote. You know, that's how I started out. But then, you know, I got on YouTube, saw other things, and I came up with this bucket system. So this bottom bucket here doesn't have any holes in it. And that, it's going to catch everything that leaks out of my bin here. And... Yes, my JD boy, he thinks it smells good. So that's some good shit in there, huh? It's good shit. <laughs> but this bucket here, I, I got laid inside of it. This has holes in the bottom. And what that's going to allow you to do is all the moisture, worm pee, and all that good stuff, it's going to leak down in there. And they call that leache, leache, something like that. But that's like probably the best, most natural fertilizer you're ever going to get. You know, you dilute that down with some more water, give it to your plants, and they're going to love you. Anyhow, getting back to how I got to doing this bucket system instead of a tote, and why I like this so much better, is that when it comes time that I want to harvest these worm castings, you know, usually at the top of your bucket you got all this matter that hasn't been broken down yet you might have some food scraps and got some paper in there they ain't been broken down so let's say i want to harvest what's at the bottom you know let me get to the bottom here and this is what you're after nice dark you know that's that's what you're after yeah he, he likes that what is that that's good stuff huh but at the same time you got all your eggs from your worms that have been doing their thing in there you know you can't just if you go in there and take them out all those eggs in there they can end up in your pot or whatever you're putting it in which is okay you know i do that sometimes i just dig to the bottom i take a handful out and use it if i need it but let's say i want to harvest what's in here and still keep my worm population thriving all I'm going to do is take another bucket, right, drill some holes in that one, and I'll take out this top layer of all the undecomposed stuff, stuff that hasn't broken down yet, and I'm going to throw that in a new bucket, and I'm going to throw some new bedding in there. You, you can use hay, you can use grass clippings, leaves, whatever you got, you know, you don't got to go out and buy this, you don't got to go out and buy stuff to do this, you know, get your worms. But other than that, you can just use whatever you got laying around your house, and you can do this. You know, very cheap. You know, I didn't even pay for these buckets. Found them. So, you know, back to, you know, let's say I want to now get to the point where I want to be able to use these castings and keep my worms thriving. I'll just take a new bucket, take all that undecomposed stuff, like I was saying, throw it in your new bucket, new bedding, and then throw some new food scraps in there. And food scraps, you know, it could be whatever, you know. There's some things you want to stay away from. But, you know, your banana peels, your coffee grounds, your orange peels. I stay a little light on the citrusy stuff. I throw it in there on the orange peels, but not too much. But your banana peels, when my kids decide not to eat the rest of their apple or whatever, I throw it in there, you know. And your, your worms are going to love it. So once you got that that new bucket set up, I'm just gonna set it right right dead on top of this bucket, you know. And it's gonna have that new bucket's gonna have holes in it, like this bucket. And what that's gonna allow that to do 
So when I set this bucket down, say this is the new bucket with new bedding and new food on top of the old bucket, those worms are now going to go up. Red wigglers, they like to stay in the top soil or the top layers of the soil, you know, in a natural sense. You know, they don't want to be down laying in their poop. They're going to come up to where the new food is and thrive and mate and make more worms. Mm -hmm. So, when I'm tr transitioning to a new bucket, you know, I'll give it, you know, once I got new food in there, I'll give it, you know, maybe a month. You know, maybe that's going too far. You probably don't have to. But I said a month, so that gives time for your worms, the, the worm eggs, I mean, to be able to hatch and those babies to some of them, you know, make it up to your new bucket. And all your big worms will be up in that new bucket by the time. If you at least wait like probably two weeks, you know, you won't be pulling a ton of worms out of your old bucket, you know, because they're going to crawl up into your new bucket where the, the food is, where they want to be. They don't want to be down in their poop. You know, and that's the stuff you want. So laying that new bucket on with new bedding, new food, your worms want to be there. That's where they're going to go. And then the, what that does is leave you with just all your fresh worm castings down at the bottom. You know, let's say this was a bucket full of the old castings that I left to allow my worms to get to the new bucket on top. You know, then you, you know, you got minimal worms down in that bottom that you're going to take out and put in to your use. Some people dry their castings out, you know, which would kill your worms. So they, you know, then you might wait a month before you go and harvest your, so all those eggs can hatch and get into that new bucket, you know, keep your population thriving. But for me, you know, I'll go down there and grab a scoop. I don't care if I put a couple worms in my plants because of the way I decide to feed my plants. I use organic amendments inside of a peat moss mix, you know. A peat moss or cocoa doesn't hold on to much nutrients, so you got to kind of add that. But putting those organic amendments into your non-soil bases, you know, what you plant your plants in, you, you know, this ain't soil, this is a medium, just like cocoa, peat moss is a medium, it's not a soil, it doesn't hold on to nutrients the same as soil does. So when I put my organic amendments, I'll grab one just to show you, Buy alive, like this is one of my go to's, and that's my beautiful boy right there, JD. But buy alive, this is one of my you know, I use this for everything, all my gardening. But this isn't going to do nothing for your plant if it's not, you know, this needs to be broken down. I'm giving this to my worms to eat. You know, so when they break this down, the microorganisms turn that into your your nitrogen, your phosphorus, potassium, calcium, those things that your plants can actually take up. When you just put this into an inert medium like a peat moss or cocoa, it's not going to, your plants can't just take this up, you know. And what's in this, you know, I'll go over what's, you know, what's in some of these, and they're all different. You know, this is my go-to down to earth. You know, they don't pay me. They don't give me this. I buy all this. This is what I use. You know, take that for what you, what you want, but this is what I like. You know, this in particular, BioLive, what's in it is fish bone meal, fish meal, alfalfa meal, crab meal, shrimp meal, Lagbanite, lagbanite, if I said that right, and kelp meal, you know. But those things need to be eaten up, basically, and, and essentially pooped out by that microorganism life for your plants to take it up. And that's what these worms are doing for you, and that's what makes worm casting so superior over any kind of bottled, like, nutrients and any of that that you can buy. And this is going to do it for you with, with the help of your worms, you know. And that right there, you know, that's, 
I start my seeds with that. I might do a little bit of cocoa and I just put a little bit of worm castings in there. I start my seeds that way or you, you could just start them right in straight worm castings. You top dress your, your potted plants with them. It doesn't burn your plants, you know. It, I have never burned my plants from putting too much worm castings in them. That's, that's the amazing part of it and the, the life that it adds to your soil. Like I don't even use the soil, but I add life to my medium that I use from this and different amendments that I put in it. And that's where I learn my journey on organics. You guys help me out, you know, hitting that like button so more people can see my my content out there and brought to you by Alaskan. Just kidding, but I drink it. Grand Kush guys, signing out.